The Chestnut Hill neighborhood, formerly known as Cameron Trimble, is a triangle-shaped community in Nashville, Tennessee, located to the south of Interstate I-40 and Lafayette Avenue and just southeast of downtown. Chestnut Hill is the oldest surviving African-American neighborhood in Nashville and has a vibrant history dating all the way back to the Civil War. The city was overtaken by federal troops early in 1862 due mainly to the fact that the Louisville and Nashville Railroad served as the only major railroad link between the North and the South at the time. This occupation by federal troops allowed escaped slaves to live in the community under federal protection. When the war ended, these camps and communities, including the area now known as Chestnut Hill, expanded to become the nuclei of African American neighborhoods in Nashville. In 1867, new educational opportunities helped Cameron Trimble start to grow. In that year, a new colored public school was opened on 5th Avenue South, and in the same year, Central Tennessee College was opened on what is now 1st Avenue. The college would go on to contribute greatly to the community and beyond, but no contribution was greater than its establishment of the Meharry Medical Department in 1875. Meharry was the first facility for training black doctors in the South. The emergence of this important medical school had a positive influence on the entire local population as it caused more doctors, students, and nurses to move into the community and enhance the standing of the community as a whole. Unfortunately, Cameron Trimble took a huge hit in 1931 when Meharry was relocated to North Nashville, taking much of the educated middle and upper class residents with it. The influence that the Cameron Tribble education system had on the surrounding community can be seen in the various opportunities that it brought to the area. One such opportunity came in the 1920s in the form of the Nashville Elite Giants, a professional baseball team in the Negro League. The Giants played in Tom Wilson Park, a stadium located near the convergence of 2nd and 4th Avenue that drew more fans than the white baseball team in Nashville at the time and saw baseball greats such as Babe Ruth, Roy Campanella, and Lou Gehrig play on its field. Unfortunately, the team eventually moved north to Baltimore in the 1930s, and the park was subsequently demolished. Today, a vacant lot stands as the only reminder of the once great stadium. Since its inception, Chestnut Hill has had a rich tradition of providing living space and education to much of Nashville's African-American population. However, despite this history, Chestnut Hill has repeatedly had to bear the unfortunate consequences of segregation and other social injustices over the years. The Housing Act of 1937, which linked slum clearance with public housing, lowered the vitality and connectivity of the neighborhood. Numerous single-family homes were demolished for barrack-style public housing, which concentrates poverty and crime. The construction of the interstate highway system in the late 1960s, including the I-40 section in the neighborhood, demolished many single-family homes and worked to create a physical and psychological barrier between the neighborhood and the downtown area. Despite these challenges, Chestnut Hill remains resilient and hopeful that there are better days ahead. While it currently lags behind in almost all of the factors that the Nashville Civic Design Center uses to assess neighborhoods, it has the potential for a rebirth. Known over the years as both Cameron Trimble and Trimble Bottom, it was renamed Chestnut Hill in 2005 in a move that is reflective of the residents' hopes that the area will experience positive growth in the coming years. We interviewed Dion White, a resident of Chestnut Hill, to get a first-hand perspective on both the assets that come with living in the neighborhood and the challenges faced by the community. Dion is a longtime member of Chestnut Hill and was kind enough to invite us into his home to share more about his life and experiences. Dion currently resides at 19 North Hill Street in a house that has been passed down through his family. I've been in this house for about 12 years now. I started in, uh, at 21 North Hill. Uh, actually, this home I live in right here, my grandmother owned. Over the years, this area has been known by many names. Today, many people refer to it as Chestnut Hill. However, many people in the area, like Dion, feel a stronger sense of community within their specific street. Um, as far as the name wise, I just sit where I live at, uh, North Hill. That's what called, you know, Chestnut Hill, North Hill. People like basically claim the streets their own. While this fragmentation of Chestnut Hill could be seen as a drawback, we found the sense of community within the streets to be a very positive thing. Despite the fact that most streets in Chestnut Hill do refer to themselves individually, a sense of neighborhood pride permeates the entire area. From the stories that I heard, um, this neighborhood used to be very um, vibrant, uh, just hardworking, uh, middle-class families, some well-to-do families, because if you go right down the street on First Avenue, um, that's the Meharry House. That's where. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Hubbard was 
he's the one that founded Meharry Medical College. The rich history of Chestnut Hill is known to many of his residents, and this knowledge will hopefully aid the community as it looks to reestablish itself in the broader Nashville-Davidson area. However, before we can start looking at the future of Chestnut Hill, we must first look at its present state. By looking at a typical day in the life of Dion White, we are able to assess both the challenges that the neighborhood is facing and the assets that have allowed it to remain a successful community for so long. I'm a Metro police officer, so uh, my day is a 3 to 11. A regular day, um, get up, uh, you know, just brush my teeth. If I have court, I go to court. Um, it's, it's, not, it's no different from anybody else. The first thing Dion does in the morning is eat breakfast. His car allows him to travel to get food easily, but not all Chestnut Hill residents are so lucky. In this neighborhood, we don't have a, uh, you know, we don't have one of the superstores. The only supermarket we have is, uh, I think it's CB right up the, right up the street. And um, I have nothing against CB, but it doesn't, it doesn't look too appealing to me. I don't like the way it looks. It looks run down. But um, I, I, I kind of wish that we, yeah, we did have a market. I'm just putting myself in their shoes. If I had to go to the store, I can't carry all the groceries that I need to carry just because, you know, you had to think about is the bus going to be full, what time you're going on the bus. Um, I feel like that would be kind of a hardship because you can't carry all the stuff that you want to. Despite the hardships faced by some residents in their search for easy food access, the public bus service that runs through Chestnut Hill is clearly one of the area's strongest assets. We have a bus line mm -hmm. on First Avenue and um, on Lewis Street. You can walk the the bus service is very, you know, it, it, we had the bus line to get to where we need to go if, if, you, if you don't have a car. However, even for those who do have a car, there have been documented issues with the traffic patterns and parking availability around Chestnut Hill. In recent years, some of the smaller issues facing neighborhood residents have been made worse by the increased number of abandoned lots in the area and the problems that they bring with them. It's a lot of abandoned houses around here, and I don't like the prostitution. It's, it's a lot of, to me, it's a lot of drug dealers around here. As Dion mentioned, drugs and prostitution have been prevalent in the area and have posed as challenges to new growth in the last few years. Developers have also been wary of public housing projects that concentrate crime in certain areas. But a lot of times when people see the uh, housing projects, they, it kind of, it kind of discourages them because they don't like, man, it's probably a lot of gang members, just bad people all together. So I, I think, in a sense, the projects do discourage some business, not all business, but some. However, the close proximity to downtown and the history of the neighborhood make it an ideal location for reinvestment. But a lot of people have invested money in this community because they, they see it's coming up, that things are changing. So yeah, I believe, hopefully in the near future, maybe five more years, that the property value will come up even more. As investment is made into Chestnut Hill, one possible downfall is that increasing property values could lead to the gentrification of the area. Despite this threat, most community members encourage new growth and new residents. Well, it's a lot of vacant lots over here, and if somebody buy them up and say, hey, um, you know, let's, let's build a house that's affordable for a family, and, you know, get, get, them, in, get them in the neighborhood, I, I think it would help out a lot. If you have more people in, in, you know, on the property and in, in houses, I think a lot of the the, you know, the underworld wouldn't want to, you know, be in this community. As new development brings in new residents, they will find the beginnings of a strong community system. For instance, both the Dudley Center and the Trimble Action Group provides outlets for neighbors to meet and connect in order to better their lives and their neighborhood. Um, the Dudley Center is a Head Start uh, center now. There's a lot of kids right there, and they have a walking track where people walk and run and stuff and play and a little playground and stuff like that. The Trimble Action Group, we meet at St. Patrick's Church. That's where we discuss, um, you know, what what we can do to bring the neighborhood up, uh, different things like that. You go on Chestnut, you can see where they built the um, the sign heads, Welcome to Chestnut Community. It's like, it's, it's bricked. Uh, they're doing little things like that, just, you know, just enough to like, to make you notice, like, hey, that's, that's different. I hadn't seen a stop sign like that before. Even within Dion's own street, Signs of progress are evident in the form of a new community garden taking the place of an old abandoned lot. This garden serves as both an educational opportunity for local students and a much needed source of fresh produce. While Chestnut Hill seems headed in the right direction, 
the challenges they face in the coming years as they look to reclaim their status among Nashville's greatest neighborhoods will require them to continue to work together to improve many different aspects of their surroundings. By addressing issues in transportation, safety, and housing, Chestnut Hill can look forward to a future that is as bright as their past. This area has a lot of history. I, I, that's just how I feel. I feel like this, this area you know, has something to offer Nashville. I don't know if too many people know about it, but you know, it, it does. We look forward to seeing Chestnut Hill's growth in the future and want to thank Deanne White for all his help with our project.